So the lighting is absolutely terrible right now. We're down to one light of the three on my ceiling fan working and it's pouring rain outside. At least I have the LED strips on my desk. So I've been needing one of these for quite a while. This is a IP KVM switch. So while I unbox this, I'm gonna go over what this is. And you can see my kind of sorry excuse for a box cutter here. It's actually a spudger if you couldn't tell. And it's doing a pretty okay job here, but this device is an IP KVM and this will be going in my server rack. So I've been wanting a KVM set up, a good one, since I first started having a proper server rack in around this time of 2015, I wanna say. So my plan for my big 42U rack that you've all seen was to have a four port TrendNet KVM that I got quite a few years ago. And I was gonna modify that to have buttons on a rack panel or something. But I was looking online and I was in uh, Deus Kane's live stream. I'll put a link to his Twitch in the description. He says he really likes these Avicent KVMs. And I looked on eBay and I found this one. It's a 16 port, which is awesome. I made an offer for 60. He offered 70 back. The, the original price was 75 and I figured five bucks off is fine. This does not come with rack ears. I'm gonna have to get some of those. They look like 25 bucks on eBay, which I guess is quite a lot. I could make my own, but they'd be kind of cheap and not good, so so there's a bunch of packing peanuts. I wish they would have used a more environmentally friendly option, like bubble wrap or something that I could reuse. Well, I guess I could reuse this, but... So if we open this up here, or pull it out of the wrapping, if you can hear me, and brush all the peanuts off, we have the KVM switch. And I'll set that aside, even though I have nowhere to put it. Because I've been doing unboxing after unboxing in this room, and there's so many boxes and packing materials piled up right now. I'm going to clean once this video is over. So we also have the power cord. It's a pretty nice power cord, I'd say. It's not really too cheap feeling, so I'm happy with that. So I actually haven't mentioned this on camera yet. This is a Avacent DSR4030, I think. And it's a 16-port IP KVM. So the way IP KVMs work, and this kind of was what confused me for a while, if you can hear me, was KVM switches are KVM switches, right? They, they take four inputs, and you can select which one goes to the output. And I thought the IP had something to do with Like, the way the server was done, and the server had to have software on it, so it would stream the video to the Switch. But that's actually not the case, and you can barely see what's going on right now. The way IP KVMs work is they just have a web interface, and you can access them. The, the devices plug in normally. You can see we have our 16 inputs here, and we have our links and uh, speed and power and USB, and I believe that's for plugging in like an optical drive to load uh, installation media off of. On the side there are two vents, and on the back we have our 16 inputs. You'll notice those are RJ45 connectors, and that's something that also kind of confused me about IP KVMs. This one actually has two modules, we'll unbox those later in the video because everything is supposed to arrive today. And those modules are like an RJ45 to VGA and USB breakout. I ordered two of them because I only have two servers that I'm going to be using. Probably by the next six months from now I'll have eight servers and I'll fill up the rest of the ports with that. Obviously I have 16 ports that I can eventually populate and I can daisy chain the ports. There's also the NIC for the IP. And then these are like modem things and serial things. I'm not really sure what those are for. I'll look at the manual at some point. We also have PS2, USB, and VGA. This is something I really liked about this KVM is the rack drawers all have PS2, at least the cheap ones do. And so this will kind of transfer or uh, adapt the signal from PS2 to USB. If I pan the camera over a little bit, we also have a uh, Tostitos bag down there. I have a box that I'm using for recycling under the desk. We also have, I believe, a power light. That might be a button, I think it's a light. We have two, I'm gonna say 30 millimeter fans. I've never actually seen fans that small, case fans at least. And then we have our power switch, which is pretty beefy, and then our power input. So I don't have the modules yet, but I think what I'm going to do is set this up with my monitor and a keyboard and mouse and we're going to play around in the menu a little bit. So everything's plugged in and set up. 
Let's uh, turn it on. It's rather loud. And it looks to be like posting or something. We have our display come up. And if we hit print screen, it should bring up a menu. I'm just gonna grab the keyboard so I don't have to reach across the camera. And so you can see, if I hit print screen, it brings up a menu. And these have all of the uh, computers that are plugged in. Obviously, no adapters right now. And so, uh, yeah, but still pretty cool. So uh, it looks like hitting the one key brings up instruction. I wish when someone called on the iPhone it didn't interrupt the video, but that's what happened if you notice that cut there. Anyway. To switch to a server, highlight the server and press enter or double click on the desired entry list. The home end, page up, page down, and arrow keys move the highlight through the server list. So that's pretty cool. Like I said, no options to choose right now. So it's a few days later. The rack ears for the Avisons have arrived and you can see them there. And I stuck a piece of wood in between them, replaced some screws, and you can see how it lines up stays in the rack nicely. It's a nice solid mount in there. I'm pretty happy with it. I haven't started this thing up yet, so I guess I'll do that now. I'm not going to run it for very long because I still have to cut out some wood for these vents which extend the entire way of the case. I also took my keyboard and mouse upstairs for my Power Edge unboxing that you're going to see in the next video, but uh, let's turn this on. And we will get an output on this. Actually, I'll fire up the uh, net backup 5230 and show you the interface. So the server is being kind of loud right now, but we have it plugged in and I have this module and that plugs into the port on the back of the KVM, and if I hit print screen, we get our menu, you can not really see, but it says Colossus right there on port 2, and that's the Ethernet port 2 or RJ45 port 2. I also have another server in the bottom plugged in with that, but that's the loud 1366 computer, so I'm not going to try that yet, but yeah, you can see everything works. I'm obviously selected on that input because I can see the screen for the server. So if we go around to the front, we have lights and everything, and here we go. So I'm not sure if I said this in the video already, but if I ever get a KVM drawer, it's going to go in this unit here. And then I have a PowerEdge R710 that's going to go in this space right here in a few days. So yeah, that's pretty neat. So I wanted to mention a few things before I close out this video. I had thought I mentioned in the video that these wooden plates here are kind of stupid and you can't really see it as well with the power edge sitting up there. Once again you'll see that in the next video. But I might end up remaking these and kind of machining them a bit better because they still cover those vents here and you can kind of see I traced out these. But I could do a much better job with those and it is like the winter time now, sort of. It's November something and it's cold and it's stupid and it's just I don't want to be outside working on this stuff and honestly this is fine for now. So I'm probably going to keep it like this for a while and then end up making some better ear extensions and spray paint those black or like a nice dark gray to match the finish of this. I'm not sure if I mentioned it in the video, but I got three more of those modules and one goes to the power edge, one goes to the net backup 5230, and then I have two down there for the AMD and 1366 PC, and then my router PC, ignore the nest up there, that one will get one as well once I get a display port or HDMI to VGA adapter because that board only has display port and HDMI on it. I'd also like to get some nice green ethernet cables and green will be the KVM color and you can't really see anything back there but there it is under the power edge. I'm also considering running conduit. We are in my basement which is uh, semi-clean right now and this rack is going to stay down here but my 
kind of office is in my bedroom on the second floor. Once I get the rack going a bit more and all set up and everything, which I have a lot of changes to do further, and there's a lot of setup that still needs to be even started on this, I'm going to be putting the rack in my furnace room, and it's pretty tight back here. There's also sprinkler stuff here in the furnace, and I'm debating if I should put it in this room or in this room, which is on the other side of the house. And this room is directly under my bedroom in the basement. So I have a shelf here, and the old router modem combo from Xfinity sits there. We also have our coax stuff, and up there, you might be able to see it up there, I have a kind of custom patch panel thing I made to get those blue wires connected to the rest of the house. We have, I think, five ethernet jacks around the house. I'm gonna go into more detail about this in the future in a different video, but the main reason I came in here was because in this wall I am going to be drilling out a hole for a two-inch conduit that goes outside, runs up the side of the house, and goes into my bedroom. The plan for that is I am going to have six ethernet cables, two or three fiber connections for 10 gigabit to the rack, and I'm also going to be running some other RJ45 cables for if I can find them around here. I ended up getting a bunch of these things from my friend and I still have to give them back, but I'm going to get something similar to these. And these are VGA and USB over Cat5 or ethernet cable. And I am going to not only have a KVM drawer in the rack at some point, but I'm also going to be putting one of these monitors, a keyboard and mouse, and those will have a direct link to the Avacent here so I can control all of the servers from my bedroom without having to come down here and figure stuff out. It's going to be separate from the network, so if I screw something up on the network side, I still have access to the servers and I still have access to a computer in the rack, which is going to be the AMD system down here. I might get an R210 or something and have that be the main rack PC, but for now, the AMD 4U system is going to take up space and it actually doesn't turn on right now, so that's great. I have to figure that out, but whatever. With that said, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I have quite a lot of really awesome networking stuff I'm going to be unboxing pretty soon. That's on the way. But for now, the Avacent is all set up and everything and working great. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video.